Hello, Catherine here. There is only one mineral in the renal diet that's even more important than potassium. A mineral that, if not controlled, may cause even more damage. Yes, I'm talking about phosphorus. You probably already know that if you have CKD in any stage from 3 to 5, you need to restrict phosphorus intake. Too much phosphorus can cause a long list of serious problems, muscle cramps, bone and joint problems, but also heart attacks and strokes. Yes, studies are linking higher serum phosphate levels to a higher mortality rate. This is why I believe that having too high serum phosphate is maybe even worse than having too high potassium levels. And today, we will see exactly how to avoid this problem. Guys, this is really important. Managing phosphorus correctly is key to help you keep and improve your GFR and other key markers of kidney health. There is no improving if this level is not under control. And recently, there have been huge changes in the guideline for the diet for CKD. And in my opinion, it's very important that you know about this. Because just like for potassium, the recommendation for phosphorus change. Which is a good thing, don't get me wrong. This new guideline finally aims at helping patients achieve better outcomes in terms of preserved kidney function and improved GFR. Today, we are going to see what change and what remain at the same about phosphorus. So, question, how can you tell if your phosphorus is too high? Extra phosphorus causes body changes that pull calcium out of your bones, making them weak. High levels of phosphorus can also remove calcium from other parts of your body, leading to low calcium or hypocalcemia, which can cause symptoms such as muscle cramps, bone and joint pain. Phosphorus is the main reason why dairy products are not recommended for people with kidney disease. Actually, dairy products could cause you bone problems. Yes, milk is supposed to strengthen your bones, but if you have kidney disease, you could obtain the exact opposite effect. Why? Due to inability of the kidneys to get rid of excess phosphorus. Phosphorus is also a contingent reason why foods such as meat and many processed foods are also restricted. As I was saying, an imbalance in the levels of this mineral can cause bone and muscle problems and increase your risk for heart attacks and strokes. But today, the way we manage phosphate levels in CKD is different from what many people are used to. Question, what changed in the guideline for phosphorus? While in the past dietary restrictions were the norm in CKD, today we know that they don't really help unless they are tailor suited for the individual. We also know that not all foods are equal when it comes to phosphorus bioavailability and restricting plant-based foods doesn't help at all. What really helps is restricting animal protein. Yes, animal-based foods are the main source of phosphorus you want to avoid. The goal of managing phosphorus didn't change. We need to keep this level in the correct range to help the kidneys. Question, how much phosphorus should you have? Every day, it was usually suggested to stay within a daily intake of phosphorus between 800 to 1000 mg in all the stages, dialysis included. This recommendation is, however, outdated as the current guideline points out. Today, what's recommended is to focus on an individualized treatment, to focus on maintaining the correct serum phosphate levels instead of giving everyone the same identical diet. That never worked. Besides, we know today that avoiding high-protein foods such as meat, fish, and dairy is way more important for phosphorus levels than any other intervention. And there are binders that we can also use. More about foods and supplements later on in this video. But as I was saying, your main goal with phosphorus is to keep the correct serum phosphate levels. This is something CKD patients need to test for regularly. Action should be taken promptly if this level is out of the normal range. So question, what are the correct serum phosphate levels? According to the National Kidney Foundation, CKD patients stage 3 and 4 should keep their phosphorus between 2.5 and 4.5 mg per dl. Patients on dialysis should keep their phosphorus levels in the 3.0 to 5.5 mg per dl range. 
those in dialysis should also keep in mind that dialysis does remove phosphorus. So it's very important for everyone to pay attention to their phosphate level on their tests. Make sure this number is always in the correct range to protect your kidneys, your heart, and your bones. In most patients, but not all, phosphate levels tend to be too high. And there are two ways to keep phosphate levels down. Limiting the intake and using binders. Let's start with the foods. What foods contain phosphorus? Some common dietary sources of phosphorus include dairy products, red meat, poultry, and seafood. Processed foods such as deli meats, bacon, sausages, sodas, and sport drinks are also high in phosphorus. Since phosphates are used as food preservatives, foods such as baked goods, morning cereals, sauces, and many other packaged foods may also be rich in phosphate. And these foods need to be completely avoided if possible. None of these is suitable for a renal diet. Now, there are other foods that contain phosphorus that don't need to be completely avoided. These include legumes, nuts, whole wheat breads and cereals, and some vegetables such as asparagus, tomatoes, and cauliflower. So, there are some foods containing phosphorus that you should completely avoid and some that you can still eat. Why? Is all phosphorus from foods the same? No, there are various types of dietary phosphorus and the body will react differently if phosphorus is coming from plant-based foods, from animal-based foods, or from additives. In general, foods that have added phosphorus will cause your blood phosphorus levels to go up more than foods that have phosphorus naturally. Phosphorus that is added to our food is nearly 100% absorbed. Phosphorus from meat and dairy is also highly absorbed. About 90% of phosphorus from animal-based foods ends up in our bodies. But you only absorb about 30-40% to of the phosphorus from plant-based foods. Now guys, acknowledging this difference in the way the body absorbs phosphorus is the cause of one of the biggest changes in the renal diet today. We know now that limiting the intake of meat, dairy, and foods containing phosphate as an additive is a must. On the other hand, limiting foods such as grains, nuts, seeds, and other plant-based foods won't help managing phosphorus. And what about legumes? Can you have legumes in a renal diet? Yes, some legumes can be included in a renal diet. They can be a good addition to soups and stews and their phosphorus content is not an issue. However, it is important to note that legumes vary in their protein content. And since the main requirement for a diet that protects the kidneys is a low protein content, you may need to be careful with the amount of legumes you consume. For example, green beans have only 1.5 grams of protein per 100 grams serving. Peas have 5.42 grams of protein per 100 grams serving. Lentils have 9.02 grams of protein per 100 gram serving. Beans in general are way richer in protein than that and should be avoided, however. Now, as for other plant-based foods, the phosphorus content of legumes is not really an issue. Besides, you can decrease even more your phosphorus absorption with a phosphate binder. Guys, if you found this video informative, please tap the like button and also consider sharing it if you know other people following a renal diet. It may be useful for them to know more about phosphorus. Question, what can you use to decrease phosphorus absorption? Calcium-based phosphate binders are often used to keep phosphate levels down. Taking them with meals may be helpful because calcium carbonate sticks to the phosphorus in the foods you eat. The phosphorus is then removed through the bowel, effectively stopping your body from taking extra phosphorus in. So ask your doctor if you are not taking one. These also have other benefits. Since they are calcium-based, they can raise your serum calcium, which is usually too low in those with CKD. Another benefit of calcium-based phosphate binders is that they protect you from oxalates. Excess oxalate intake may be an issue for some patients because it's a cause of kidney stones. This may be greatly reduced by taking a binder at meals. Guys, if you want to know more about oxalate, please watch my video about it. It's up here. Another less known way to decrease phosphate levels is something called chitosan. 
Chitosan is a polymer found in the exoskeleton of shrimp, lobster, and other crustaceans. It's a common supplement, but most people take it because it can be used to aid in body weight reduction. But chitosan doesn't just bind to fat and phosphorus in the intestine. It also absorbs uremic toxins, creatinine included, and that's way more interesting for us. Chitosan is so powerful at reducing creatine levels, it was actually used in some studies to lower creatine levels in patients in all the stages. And it worked! So if you want to know how sickly patients are lowering their creatinine levels thanks to Kaitosan, please watch my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.